Chapter 11, The Normie's Guide to the Multiverse. There are a multitude of multiverses that have been proposed by humans. There are brain, cyclic, ensemble, growing block, holographic, imaginary, inflationary, landscape, many worlds, mathematical, quantum, quilted, self-reproducing, simulated, superstring, ultimate, varying constant, and many more. Unfortunately for me, this means that thus far in this book, I have been using the word multiverse in hopes that you at least vaguely understand what the concept of a multiverse is. Additionally, I would hope that you have a non-skeptical disposition on the word, since for scientific-minded intellectuals, the proponents and skeptics are currently in a deadlock on the issue. And it doesn't help that there are a plethora of fiction writers, visual artists, woo peddlers, and cult leaders muddying the waters of this idea. So even though I will be adding my thoughts to this topic, potentially muddying the waters of the pond as a whole, I can still hope to clarify what dimensionalism's current interpretation of the multiverse is. The goal is to create a clear, isolated, filtered, and drinkable water within the muddy multiverse pond. So when I say multiverse, I am saying, in the fewest amount of words, an ultimate, self-reproducing, quantum, growing block multiverse. The words mathematical, inflationary, quilted, cyclic, and varying constant are also applicable, but are redundant when the four chosen adjectives are described in depth. And since it required my imagination to figure this out, I guess it is imaginary too. The word ultimate is in reference to Max Tegmark's four levels of multiverse classifications, in which ultimate is the fourth level. It means that all probable universes that could causally begin to exist do exist somewhere within the multiverse model. As stated earlier in this book, the observation that causality and time are identical phenomena when looking into the past, but uncertain when looking into the future, would make the causality field contain all of the possible universes that could emerge from nothing originate from the Big Bang. At our current stage in the observable universe's evolution, other universes with varying fundamental constants and varying quantity of dimensions are not considered. We do not have to worry that our universe will suddenly grow a fourth spatial dimension. However, I would propose that Tegmark's ultimate classification would not be capable of being proved under the most vigorous skeptical microscopes. But testing and thinking on Tegmark's third level classification of a many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics could be accepted by the majority of physicists in the future. If the many worlds interpretation could switch its scope from infinite dimensional Hilbert space to just the eight dimensional mass electric space time, the removal of this infinity of dimensions at the third level could make the ideal more palpable to skeptics. Then, the logical inference of this model can be pushed back to the point of nothingness at the Big Bang, in which the actualizations of an infinite number of dimensions to an infinite number of universes can be implied to create an ultimate multiverse. There are still an infinite number of universes actualized currently within the causality field, but scientists could still further limit the possibilities of a single quantum event to the point of an acceptably finite probability distribution. This is testable. Then the results can be inferred to happen with the totality of quantum events that happen at every point in mass electric spacetime. Of course, those and not are the ultimate cause of every universe in the multiverse. They are inevitable! They are also at the level 5 through perfect beyond ultimate level which is the non-existent level. Praise be! My usage of self-reproducing is in line with what normies would consider as self-reproducing. It is asexual. In terms of what mechanics underlie the universe, the answer is that existence is in perpetual motion. It is cyclic in the sense that the same state of the wheel of our existence will return after a full revolution. Again, the nothing that existed before the Big Bang is the same nothing that will exist after the death of the universe. Entropy will just continue to increase in this very open system until there is a perfectly ordered empty set again. And just so that we're clear on the mythical aspects presented in this book, the physical Big Bang would have actually occurred upon the psychological splitting of zilch into zilch and nada. The sexualized dividing of themselves amongst each other is just relevant poetry that coincides with the math of the matter. So Zilch going crazy by himself, and Zilch and Nada going crazy on each other, are both representative of this same phenomena of self-reproduction. A few more poetic examples of this self-reproducing will also be shown later in this book. 
a lot of people in my time misconstrue quantum to mean something along the lines of a visualizable decoherence of events. There was a TV show called Quantum Leap that was airing around the time of my birth that delved into the public consciousness. The show never really explains the quantum aspect of the show. It just uses the word as a segue to explain the magic of the protagonist transferring his consciousness to another person in the past. The visualizable decoherence of events is that the audience could see that the protagonist was still the same entity that tied the show together, but the protagonist himself could only see the reflection of the person he leaped into. It also doesn't help that there are way too many nebulous philosophers who try to use the word to explain things in a form of a dressing list word salad, saying things that do not mean what they think it means. They have created phrases such as going quantum to mean being your true self. At least my word salads are close enough to meaning what the current dictionaries say they mean. I would only ever say the phrase go quantum in jest because it makes no sense. How does one go to the smallest meaningful quantity of physical unit? I suppose zero can be seen as a meaningful quantity, and I do call the inner true self null. Hmm. But I still wanted to use the word quantum in this instance, because quantum should be reserved for the smallest meaningful one of somethingness. So don't go anywhere. Be null. If you want to go quantum, at least reserve it to mean what it would actually mean to observe the Planck scale iterations of mass electric space-time. So a quantum multiverse would therefore mean a multiverse that can be explained in terms of the tiny space scale science of quantum mechanics. That is it. So with this definition of quantum, I say that the whole of the probability distribution that arises from the Heisenberg uncertainty principle of quantum mechanics is actualized in some universe within the multiverse for every distinguishable quantum event. Growing block is a description that is rarely used to describe the multiverse. It usually is reserved for just explaining the expansion of the universe. For a universe to be growing block, it conjectures that the past and the present exist, while the future is yet to be written. It is in contrast with eternalism, which states that the future is also in the set of things existing, and presentism, which states that only the present currently exists. So to apply this adjective to the multiverse, it would mean that the past for every present parallel universe is real and the same. Every time we look up into the stars in the sky, we are looking into the past. Every observation that we make takes a small amount of time to come to our conscious awareness. In this instance, we are always living in the past. So the idea of presentism combined with this knowledge would mean that we're always thinking of things that don't exist anymore, which makes the idea of presentism moderately ludicrous in this regard. The idea of eternalism still has some merit to it. As Albert Einstein explained, time is relative. Some bits of somethingness appear to be accelerating away from us from our perspective, which makes their time appear slower than ours. So if we take other observers of the universe into account, we would be correct in saying our existence is in the future from their perspective. They won't know for a long time that we even existed because light takes time to travel across distances of space. But another way of looking at it is, what we see now is not actually as it is now. This is the way that I view it. I claim that everything that has mass in the universe has experienced a similar duration for over 13 billion years following similar quantum wave fractions from the originating point of nothingness. So no future has collapsed into a state of interactable, absolute certainty of existing. We can bet on certain things existing at some point, but it seems like a long shot to be able to test and verify that the future is already existing. I should also clarify that the growing block is not a cube. It is more of a sphere. From the quantum perspective, the Schrodinger equation specifically describes the current plethora of universes in the multiverse for every unique quantum event. From the ultimate perspective, the zero divided by zero equation describes the entirety of possibilities that do exist somewhere in the multiverse. It is not quantum fluctuations that give rise to new Big Bangs, no. It is the complete absence of all quantum fluctuations that keeps the multiverse self-replicating. This is the null hypothesis of the multiverse. And the multiverse will just keep on growing until everything and every placement of a thing comes to fruition in some universe.